Hey guys, welcome back to Court Cases, the official podcast of Open Court Basketball. Uh, today we have a special guest, Trevor Booker, former NBA player, businessman. Um, glad to have him on the show. Um, Trevor, how are you doing? I'm great. I'm great. Just here, you know, in the States, just uh, relaxing a little bit. That's good to hear, man. That's good to hear. Yeah, with, with times like these, it's always good to be safe and home. Um, I, I read somewhere, I want to start that off with um, a, like a funny question. Um, I read somewhere that you, as a kid, you ate 20, up to 20 bowls of cereal um, per day. Uh, <laughs> do you still have um, that love for cereal today or, or did it like vanish um, with growing age? Yeah, well, per day, whew, that's a lot. It was, it was more uh, like- Per week, sorry, know, yeah. Per week, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. My bad. But yeah, that- Their love for cereal is still there for sure. I don't eat as much, you know, because it's a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. So I'm now I'm I'm now at the age where I have to watch, you know, uh, the amount of uh, sugar that I put in my body. Yeah. Uh, what What's your favorite cereal then? What What's your go to? Um, either Frosted Flakes or Cinnamon Toast Crunch. Nice, good choices. Both of them, yeah. unfortunately, you, you, you can't get them in Germany, so I always have to bring them with me when I'm when, when I'm over. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Yeah, um, cereal is always good for for breakfast over here. Um, when when you came into in into the league, um, your first season with the Washington Wizards, um, it was the the Washington Wizards team that was infamous, you know, infamous um, with the locker room incident the, the season prior and a lot of let's say in locker rooms um, shenanigans and pranks and it was like there were prank wars between teammates and all that stuff um i bet it was a fun time on that team because there's so many stories that that like came out years after and um there's still like in every every other interview there's still new stories coming out do you have like a favorite story of that time or do you also think that it was a fun time or was it different as a, as a young player Yeah, it was definitely a fun time, you know, but I mean, if you look back at it, it was very unprofessional. You know, we would do things like, you know, um, have teams within the team where, you know, certain players would be on one side and the other players would be on, on the other side. And, you know, we'd be on the road and we would go to uh, the opposing uh, players, meaning our team, um, their hotel room, And, you know, knock on the door, find a way to get inside the room, you know, and tie, tie the player up and, and beat him <laughs> and, and dump, dump water on him. It's, it was, so so there was, there was within the Wizards. So one, one, yeah. one part of the Wizards and the other part of it was like divi divided right, in the team. Right, right. <laughs> That's yeah, hilarious. It, it, was probably, it was probably about six of us. Um, you know, I remember, you know, one time in, in L.A., um, I was on the opposing team, uh, opposed um, on the other opposite side of Gilbert Arenas and, and, and Nick Young. And we were, we, we found a way to get in Gilbert's room. We flipped all of his furniture, you know, upside down <laughs> in the hotel. We trashed his room and like, he was nowhere to be found. So it, I'm like, where is this dude? We were calling him on the phone and everything. He he's answering, but it's like he doesn't care. So little to know, I, I got tired of waiting for him to come back. And so I go back to my room and I, I get in my room, it's dark, and I just go to, you know, lay on the bed and I just get bum rushed. Somebody I had a, a small balcony and somehow he got in my room. He went to the front desk and got a key and got in my room. And they tied me up and beat me. <laughs> it, it, but it was, it, was, it was pretty fun. <laughs> I mean, it's, that's probably a very fun, you know, young players always talk about their welcome to the league moment. Your, yours probably was within the team and not on, on, in a game, you know, because right. there's so much stuff happening with them at fun times. Um, yeah, so, so would, you, would you consider the Wizards times in your career um, your, your, like your most favorite uh, team you've played for or... Uh, was it one of the others? Um, it's probably one of the others, maybe Utah. Um, I had a, a great time there. Uh, I love, you know, Brooklyn. Um, speaking of Utah, 
It, it's always funny because, you know, you were a great NBA player, but not one of the stars. And it's always fun mm -hmm. to, to be one of the, let's put it, let's say maybe backups or role players. You started a, a couple seasons as well, but back in Utah as a role player, you had probably the shot of the decade, you know, that um, 0.2 seconds on a shot clock behind the back, right. volleyball-like shot. Um, I mean, it's been quite some time since that happened. You still get, get approached um, by fans or by other people asking about that shot still today, or is it still like in your memory? Because I mean, in every other highlight show, you still get to rewatch that bucket, you know, because it was that special. Yeah. Yeah. I get approached um, about it, you know, all the time that they realize, you know, who I am, uh, especially by, you know, uh, kids at my school, you know, they talk about this shot all the time, ask me how I did it. I actually just reposted that video uh, <laughs> last night, you know, oh, okay. I was talking about, you know, how terrible my mohawk was when I made that shot. <laughs> um, but yeah, I get approached about it, you know, a good bit. That's funny. Yeah. I mean, there, there, there were a lot of fun moments in your career as well. Not only the shot, but um, I remember you um, having a lot of um, fun moments on, on with, with the other team as well. You, you snuck into the Mavs huddle, I think it was the Mavs once, you know? The Cavs. <laughs> the Cavs. Cavs sorry, yeah, the Cavs. Yeah. That was hilarious as well, <laughs> uh, seeing you there. Um, um, how, you know, I know that you're, you've, Back in during your NBA career already, you, you started your post career like while you were still active in the NBA, um, and now you're a very successful businessman with um, a lot of different um, ventures. Um, you you started the company before the NBA, or did you start it when you when you were already in the NBA? No, um, I probably got into business probably about my second year, you know, in the NBA. Um, I just seen, you know, how <clears throat> I got a quick glimpse of how guys could, you know, be out, of, be in the league one year and out of the league the next year. So, you know, that, that was a, a wake up call for me. And I had, I realized, you know, I had to I already, you know, I was already good with saving money, but I, I had, I realized that, you know, I needed to grow my money, you know, off the court. Um, so that's when I really got interested, you know, in business and, and started, you know, venturing out. Yeah. Yeah. They say, uh, I mean, I, I don't know, you never know if that statistic is true, but that's a statistic that's floating around for years that 60% of NBA players go broke within two years after retiring from the NBA, um, which is like an awful stat. So you, you went the opposite way. There's a couple, couple good positive um, examples like yourself. And um, you, you, you once said in an interview that you're planning to become an, a billionaire. Um, I mean, it's a huge goal, obviously. I don't know if you're there yet um, or if it's still in, up in the future. Um, but you also mentioned you want to become a billionaire, not because of your personal wealth, but because you want to do good for others, you know, for your community, for kids, for underprivileged uh, people, um, which is very honorable. Um, tell me something about your projects that, um, aside from your business, um, that, that are for your community and, and, and the kids. Yeah. Um, well, my original goal was to become a billionaire, but I've been thinking about it lately. I think I want to go for a trillion. Um, <laughs> you, you do? <laughs> yeah, I think I do. I'm not, I'm, I'm not even at a billion yet, but, you know, I really, I think it's, you know, honestly, you know, realistic, especially, you know, with the times that we're living in, um, you know, salaries are going to keep going up, you know, inflation, you know, it's real. So I, I think, you know, in, in technology, um, a lot of money in tech i think it's gonna i think it's a realistic goal it's gonna take a lot of hard work and the, the right team um but i gotta get to a, bi a billion first um uh, but to answer your question um some of the projects that i have going on i, I own a, um, a, a private high school here a boarding school here in uh, charlotte north carolina uh, called combine academy uh, where we offer basketball baseball soccer and golf um, you know, very elite athletes. Uh, so we, we're rolling with that right now. Um, that's, that's going great. What else do we have? Uh, a ton of real estate, mm -hmm. probably about, uh, 200 doors, you know, on real estate. So that's, that's going well. 
Um, real estate is, is the main focus right now, you know, since I'm you know, out of the NBA, it's, it's less risky and it's, um, it's, it's a nice return, you know, so real True. estate is, is really what we're heavy in. We have a, a couple of, you know, uh, startups that we're in also. Uh, so we just try to, you know, get our hands into, into, I mean, into, um, a lot of different things. So uh, you also own a, a part share of the DC United soccer team. Is that true? Yeah. Nice. Yep. So My yeah, you, in, in DC United. So you spread all over the place. You have a li lot of different interests and a lot of different ventures, um, which is good. I mean, if you if you if your goal is to become a trillionaire, then you probably better be having sure. a lot of assets. Um, yeah, the trillion thing is kind of interesting because I recently read that people assume that either Jeff Bezos or, or uh, Elon Musk could become the, the world's first trillionaire um, within the next five years. So that is not like, it's not a fantasy number. It is, it is actually right. approachable, right. which is kind of interesting if you just like, just like sh the sheer imagination of that amount of money, you know, what you could do right. with it. Um, yeah, don't you fear the taxes for it as well? You know, if you're a trillionaire, <laughs> there's probably yeah, more taxes than some people, some some countries have have as like their GOP or something like that. You know, right, right, right. Yeah, that's funny. That's a lot of taxes. Yeah, um, I assume you still watch the NBA today's NBA frequently, right? Oh yeah, for sure. Um, what do you think about how how last season ended with the um the bubble situation? Do you think um The, the entire situation, I mean, it was different. Some people say it was easier for teams to play in a bubble. Some, some said it's, it's more difficult to play in a bubble. And some, some players thrived and some players played worse than before. So I think it's like a fine line and it, it's, it's for the players to decide. But you having played in the NBA with a lot of fans, um, maybe you didn't play in, in a bubble-like situation, but... What what do you think about how how the season ended? Do you think it was it was easier for players to to thrive on a on a daily basis, or do you think it was harder with all these surrounding circumstances? Uh, I think it was a little bit of both. You know, I think some players, um, you know, they need the fans there to help them, you know, motivate them and get them going. And you know, just with them being in a bubble and not being it, being able to do their you know daily usual activities. Uh, it probably took a toll on them, you know, maybe some, you know, uh, were dealing with anxiety, um, maybe depression, you know, just from not being able to move how they want to move and staying in the bubble. Um, but for some guys, you know, I think it really helped, you know, playing with no fans. They didn't have that pressure on them, um, you know, to go out there and perform in front of, you know, uh, thousands of fans. So I think, you know, you can look at it, you know, both ways. Yeah. Do you think you would have um, handled the situation well as a player, or would you? Do you think you you would have um, kind of like played worse than before? Yeah, I think I would have handled it well. You know, um, especially if we could have had our families down there. Um, I think I would have been, you know, totally fine if I, you know, wasn't playing basketball. Um, I would have been chilling with my family. I'm I'm sure they had a lot of things to do, um, so I, I'm sure I would have been totally fine. Yeah, that sounds cool. Um, and then now this season, um, fans are now slowly coming back. Some some um, teams already have them. Some teams are coming to a point where they allow certain fans back in to the arenas. Um, but um, it's still like the whole COVID situation is kind of like hard on the league. And we're approaching like in three weeks, there's supposed to be the All-Star game in Atlanta. Um, a lot of players are advocating against it. You, we heard LeBron James, Damian Lillard, Kawhi Leonard, who, who all think that it might not be the best idea to have an All-Star game this season. Um, what are your thoughts on, on the All-Star game? Uh, well, from my understanding, the players thought that it wasn't going to be an All-Star game uh, this year. And yeah, it was, I, I it, 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 it was a break, a one-week one week break you right, know, for the players right, to, right. to regain some strength. Right, and and I, and from my understanding, that's part of the reason why they agreed to start the the season, you know, a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So if that's true, it's it's kind of you know tough, you know. I, I understand, you know, from the player standpoint, um, you know, they were told one thing, but something else happened. Um, you know, from the NBA standpoint, it is a business, and I don't know, maybe the 
the TV sales sales are down or something like that, and they need this All Star game, you know, you know, to revenue to uh, generate more revenue. Um, but the way I look at it, a deal is a deal. If they said, you know, it wasn't going to be an All Star game, uh, you got to come up with something else, you know, to make some revenue. Yeah, I think you're you're spot on with the revenue part because um I've seen the numbers and um this year's season openers on Christmas the Christmas Day games had um worse rating than last year's All Star game, so I think the NBA is kind of like desperately trying to get some revenue, but I agree what you say if 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 especially for the teams that been in the bubble for longer like the Lakers and the Nuggets and the Heat, um you know for they only had like four, five, six weeks to, to regroup and to regain some strength. Right. And then they start the season immediately. And then players like LeBron James were 36 years old, you know, um, coming off a short break and then probably looking forward to their March break. But then again, if you're selected in All-Star, you obviously play if there's a game because it's, you know, it, otherwise you probably, I don't know if, if there's some repercussions or not not for LeBron, but for others, maybe. So I think it's a, it's a difficult situation. I also think if the deal was to not play an all-star game, they should have just like canceled it, you know, have the all-star right. voting and let players who were voted in be an all-star, like statistically, you are an all-star right. all and good, you know, have a week of vacation and come back stronger. But right. it is what it is. Um, I don't think that a lot of fans will, uh, I'm not, I'm not sure if, if a lot of fans are, are going to watch it because I have the feeling that the All-Star game also is one of those games, you know, you can play a regular season game without fans, but I think the All-Star game is, is an event basically for the fans, you know, for the players and for the fans. And it's not only the right. game, you know, it's, it's all the surrounding, surrounding the game stuff, you know, there's so much, I, I was in Chicago for last year's All-Star game and there's so much going on, you know, um, just like the entire week, there's so many, not only right. like parties and events and then the game itself and the media days and the fans and, and the open practices and everything. And players have a lot of fun, you know, um, and fans too. So I think without fans, it's not a real all-star game in my opinion. Right. Um, yeah, but, but looking, definitely. looking, looking upon the all-star game, um, who do you think are like the top tier candidates to, to make some noise in the, in the playoffs? Oh, it's just like, like the Lakers and the Clippers and, and maybe the Jazz or the Nets. Or do you have like a dark horse that could make some noise once it's playoff time? Um, I mean, you always got to look at the Lakers, you know, with LeBron. Um, LeBron is going to be at the top every year. Um, Lakers. Um, I think, you know, I think the Nets, the Nets will eventually, you know, get it together and become, you know, an elite team. Um, Milwaukee, of course. Um, if I had to pick a sleeper team, I would probably have to pick um, Philly. You know, they're looking, you know, pretty good right now. Joel Embiid is on another level. Um, you know, they have, you know, Doc Rivers as a coach. Um, True. You really got to look at them right now. Yeah. And um now, yeah, and they got I think the the addition of Seth Curry was a key for them um to get that that sh much needed shooting and he's been shooting right. like out of this world, you know, it's unreal what he's right. been doing. Um I like Philly as, as well. Um it's a good dark horse pick. Um I also thought about maybe I don't know if the Mavericks can come back. They 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 have been coming back, but um I think they might need to to maybe Ah, uh, there's some 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 something missing. Um, I like yeah. the Nets team as well. Um, the whole Harden situation was kind of like a mess towards the end in Houston, but now um, I think in 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 Brooklyn he seems to be happy, and um, Kyrie and then KD seem to be happy as well. And I think they they could click. It it probably obviously takes some time, and they might need one or two bigs that they still have to um, maybe yeah at least people who can defend so that would probably be <laughs> might even be a good idea for you you know you you fit in perfectly with that team you've been in <laughs> brooklyn <laughs> maybe maybe an, a re retirement from retirement no i'm just kidding um but it would be it would be a good fit to be honest you know <laughs> yeah yeah i agree i agree yeah um last question for the day um Who's your front runner for MVP? You mentioned Embiid and LeBron and maybe Jokic, but if you if you had to pick a player today, who would you who who would you pick for MVP? That's tough. Honestly, I think it would have to be. It depends on your criteria, really. But um, 
Joel Embiid, Nikola Jokic, or either LeBron James. It's, it's kind of hard to pick, you know, between those three. But those would be my top three, I think. Yeah. Steph, Steph solely not being an MVP candidate because of the Warriors not being a top team this season? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. Cool. Yeah. So I really appreciate you taking the time to be a guest on this week's episode. Um, all the best uh, to you and, and your business and your family as well. Uh, I hope you Thank become you. a trillionaire. I really do. And I'll, I'll follow your business path. I'll, I'll have a look once, once, it, I mean, you can networth.com or whatever, you know, so once they're right. trillion, let me think it's 12 zeros, right? So once, once there's 12 zeros behind the first digit of your bank account, um, I'll think of you and I'll open a bottle of champagne in, in your honor. <laughs> Appreciate you Appreciate taking the time. It. Have a great yeah, day, you. man. Thanks. Oh, you too.